constantly searching for dinner ideas because, hey, if you're looking for it, inspiration will find you. I promised Rachel a special dinner tonight. Now, what's going to be on the menu? Let me share a secret recipe. Discover an ingredient that fires your imagination. Choose other flavors to match. Find the best way to cook them. Simple is best. My secret recipe? Cooking without a recipe. You can do it too. Something to go with tonight's tuna steaks. Ginger. I've got one of Rachel's favorite ingredients to show off today. Some spectacular fresh tuna. Just the thing for a nice quiet dinner for two. And a great opportunity to try out some new flavor ideas. If lamb and duck are special occasion meats, then tuna is a special occasion fish. Now there's lots of different tunas out there. This one is known as aka ahi in Japanese. That means red tuna. In English we call it yellowfin tuna. And because it's a member of the mackerel family, it's loaded with fat. Now, when I'm cooking tuna, my goal is not to overcook it. So what I like to do is cut it into nice, even shapes. And that way, I'll be able to sear the outside and not get too much heat to the center. I actually want to leave the center raw. So the shape of the tuna before I cook it is very important. Here's what I do. I take the time to cut it into perfect cubes. Just trim off all those pieces on the end there and try and make it a nice, even shape. And that's what I like about all these scraps, because now I get to mince these up and make something raw with them. This is going to be a treat. The Japanese call raw fish in general sashimi, not sushi. Sushi has to have rice. Sashimi, and that's what I'm making here. But before I get to enjoy it, I'm going to have to clean up a little bit. I always keep one board just for my raw fish. And I'm obsessive about keeping my hands clean. I don't want any cross-contamination. I'm going to keep this nice and cold until I need it. Clean cutting board, clean knife. I'm ready to flavor that tuna. Tuna's flavor is so strong that it can handle strong flavors to season it. But I want the flavor of the tuna to shine through, so I'm not going to add too much of any particular strong flavor. Now, when I'm flavoring tuna, I always look to the Japanese for inspiration because they seem to appreciate raw tuna better than anybody else. They've mastered it for many, many, many years. I've got some soya sauce and a little bit of sesame oil. So the key is not to use too much of these flavors. Just a little bit of soya sauce and a little bit of toasted sesame oil. Just a few drops. This is one of the strongest flavors in my kitchen. A little bit goes a long way. Okay, now some color, some green onions. I think a little bit of lime zest as well. I want the lime juice to brighten the flavor of the tuna, but I don't want the acidity of the lime juice to cook the tuna too much. Just a little bit. Let's see, what else can I add in there? Ginger, but again, not too much. Just enough ginger to add some heat to it. Now, something to balance all this even a little bit more. This may seem a little bit strange, but I think mint is going to work nicely here, too. Mmm. Oh, is that ever good? Ginger and mint, perfect flavor combination. Heat from the ginger, cooling from the mint, works perfectly. But you know, 
There is one thing missing here. A nice glass of red wine. Mmm. Oh, a perfect match for the tuna. This is going to make a great first course tonight. If this is so good, I can't wait to see how my big fat tuna steaks turn out. Rachel and I are looking forward to a nice, quiet dinner tonight alone. For me, it's an opportunity to play around with one of her favorite ingredients, rich, meaty tuna. I began by trimming the tuna into even steaks for even cooking. I minced the trimmings and tossed them with soya sauce, sesame oil, green onion, ginger, and mint. I'm definitely going to match ginger and mint together again. Now, another perfect accompaniment for tuna is leeks, my favorite kind of onion. Now, I'm thinking about braising these today, so I'm not going to cut them up into tiny, tiny pieces. I'm just going to trim that root end off of each one, just like that. Then the next cut I'll make is right up here, right around where the white starts to turn into green. Cut them in half the long way. And by leaving that root end intact, it makes it really easy to get the water inside and rinse any dirt off or sand that might be stuck in between all these layers. And to brown the leeks, I'm going to use some butter, mainly because there's a ton of flavor in butter. But there is one problem with butter. It tends to burn very quickly, especially at the temperatures that I need it to reach to brown the leeks. But there's an easy way to deal with that. Add roughly equal parts oil and butter. That way you sort of even out the butter and it won't burn, but you'll still get the flavor of it. And after a few minutes when the leeks begin to brown on the bottom, they're ready to flip over and move on to the next step. It's time to add the liquids. And in this case, hey, I'm drinking Pinot Noir today. I'm cooking with Pinot Noir. This is going to be good. Now when you braise, you want to bring the level of liquid just to the top of whatever it is you're braising. I could put a little bit more liquid in there. More wine, some water, or some chicken broth. It might seem a little bit odd to serve something like chicken broth with fish, but it totally works, mainly because chicken broth is so neutral. Now, that's what's going underneath my tuna. Now I've got an idea for something that's going on top of my tuna. I usually keep ginger in the freezer because it's so much easier to grate frozen ginger than it is to grate room temperature ginger. You'll see what I mean in a second. going to be kind of a free-range salsa almost. The beautiful thing about frozen ginger is how well it grates. It just turns into powder, really. It mixes in so well with whatever you're using it in. I'm going to leave out all the other aromatics I put into that sashimi. Ginger and mint and very little else. The ginger and the mint, they totally balance each other. Cool mint, fiery ginger, the tomatoes and olive oil serving as an aromatic base. It does need something acidic though, just, just something to finish it off. Lemons will do the job nicely, but hey, preserved lemons, I forgot all about these. These are amazing. This is like lemon candy right here. This has been sitting in this jar for over a month, and all the bitterness of the whole lemons are long gone. All that's in here is salt, sugar, and lemons. Begin with a dozen or so lemons. Rinse well under warm water.
Then make a series of deep slices into each lemon. Cram into a mason jar, layering with a heaping spoonful of salt and sugar for each lemon. Fill to the top with more lemon juice and refrigerate for at least a month, shaking occasionally every few days. Now, a little bit of preserved lemon goes a long way. I'll just mince it up, toss it in with those tomatoes. That's just what it needed. Boy, is that ever good. I'm having fun today. I haven't even started cooking my big tuna steaks yet. When I freestyle in the kitchen, I often come up with great, sometimes even amazing flavor combinations. And that's why I'm constantly writing things down in my kitchen journal to keep track. Things like cool mints and spicy ginger, a natural pairing to liven up Rachel's favorite tuna for tonight's dinner. First, I trim the tuna into steaks and turn the trimmings into flavorful sashimi with soya sauce, sesame oil, green onion, ginger, and mint. Then as a base for the dish, I braise leeks in a big red wine, Pinot Noir. And to top off the works, I toss ripe tomatoes with more ginger and mint. It's totally turned into a ginger mint day around here. In fact, now I'm thinking about making a ginger mint vinaigrette to go with a salad. So for that, I'm going to need some vinegar and I'm going to need some oil. Today, I'm sort of on this vaguely Asian kick. You know, ginger, it's a big time Asian flavor. So I'm thinking rice wine vinegar. Where's my rice wine vinegar? That would be a good start. There it is. And for an oil, sesame oil, of course. Of course, the only problem with sesame oil is that it's so strongly flavored that I'd never use it exclusively in a vinaigrette. I have to cut it with another oil. I'll probably just use a regular vegetable oil. I'm going to need one part acid, the vinegar, in this case rice wine vinegar, to three parts everything else. I'm going to add about two parts oil, that leaves me one more part to jack this up a bit. Here comes the sesame oil. And you know, I'm also going to need something else to balance out the sharpness of rice wine vinegar. I need some honey. Just a dash will do it, it won't take much. And another Asian ingredient, miso. And now, of course, the ginger. Let's see how that tastes. It definitely tastes like ginger. But the ginger is nicely balanced. The honey really helps. And that vinegar is pretty strong. And the miso, there's a richness to this vinaigrette. I really like that. I think what I'm going to do today is what I usually do with tuna steaks. I'm going to crust them with peppercorns. Peppercorns don't just add heat, they also add a whack of aroma and flavor. And that's what I'm looking for with this tuna. I've actually got a lot of different types of peppercorns here. Pink, green, black, and they've all got their own individual flavors. The 
unripe fruit of the tropical pepper vine is full of green seeds, green peppercorns. They're pretty mild and they don't have a lot of flavor. But when that fruit ripens and those seeds are piled up in the sun, they turn black, they ferment and they shrivel up, they turn into black peppercorns. They're loaded with pepper heat. If those same ripe seeds aren't dried and instead they're soaked in water, their flavorful skin falls off and they turn into white pepper. Not a whole lot of flavor, but lots of spicy heat. On the other hand are the berries from a completely unrelated Brazilian rose bush. They've got some spicy aroma and lots of flavor. Pink peppercorns. I like to take all the different varieties and make my own blend. That way I end up with a mix that has lots of heat and lots of flavor. I don't want to grind this into a powder. I want these peppers to just be cracked, just like that. Okay, now here's how I make a crust. First, I'll start with just a tiny little bit of salt on each one of those. And then, it's so simple. All you do is just press it into the peppercorns. The natural moisture of the fish is more than enough to get those peppercorns to adhere. Now the key here is to just sear the outer surface of the tuna and the peppercorns. I'm not trying to cook this fish through. In fact, I want the center to be cold rare. Very gentle. See how it's caramelized nicely there? All those colors, that's what we're looking for. Beautiful. Oh, these are searing up nicely. This is too much fun. I can't wait to get dinner going. My leeks are brazing away. That tomato topping's gonna begin on there too. It's almost time to serve them up. Time for the finishing touches, like a new shirt. I've been working on a new dish for Rachel featuring one of her favorite ingredients, fresh tuna, and some of my new favorite ingredients, ginger and mint. And I finally came up with a way to work mint into the salad. I'm just going to sprinkle fresh mint leaves right into the works. It'll work great. And I've also got some candy ginger, too. I've just sliced that up into tiny pieces. I didn't want to put the mint into the vinaigrette because I was worried that it would really dull out the flavor of the mint. So this is a great way to work it into the salad, just tossing it in at the last second. I've also got some nori seaweed that I've cut into really thin slices. I'm going to dress that in as well. It's kind of a vaguely Asian flavored salad. It'll go nicely with the tuna. This is how we're going to start dinner right here. Okay. Oh, these smell so good. And they're going to have that wonderful silken texture that braised leeks take on. Looks like I might even have some leftovers here. I want to get some of that nice red wine chicken broth in there as well. Beautiful. Pinot Noir braised leeks. It's a good start. Okay, time to slice the tuna. Now, of course, my goal when I was cooking this tuna was to keep it nice and rare in the center. Let's see how I did. There it is. That's what I'm looking for. The flavor is still in the tuna. I didn't dry it out. And some tomato, mint, ginger condiment to perch up on top of that tuna, brighten up the works. And 
this is going to be good. This is going to be really good. And I left myself a piece to taste. Mmm. Oh, boy. Lots of bursts of flavor in there with all those peppercorns. One of the best parts about experimenting in your own kitchen is coming up with great new flavor combinations like ginger and mint. And when you do, run with the ball. Try them out in lots of different ways. They may not all work, but that's okay. Because what really matters is that you're trying. Can I dress up? I'm yeah. good with flowers on it. Very nice. Some sashimi, perhaps? Sure. Mmm. Is it good? <laughs> no, it's real Ginger good. Ginger and mint. Oh, okay. It turned into a bit of a theme today. Because mm -hmm. the first I was playing around with the sashimi, and somehow it ended up with ginger and mint in it. Next thing you know, I'll put ginger and mint in everything. It's in the salad, it's in the topping. It's really nice. And when you pan roast the tuna, mm -hmm. some of the heat gets toned down in the peppercorns. It's not as spicy as you no, think it is. The flavor. No, it's all about the flavor. They're good. Here's to us. Cheers. <laughs>